In this lesson, we'll be talking about parentheses words. By the end of this lesson, I'll be able to apply parentheses appropriately when translating verbal phrases into algebraic expressions and vice versa. Our essential question is, when do we use parentheses when translating expressions? Parentheses in numerical and algebraic expressions are used to indicate multiplication, group numbers for order operation, separate numbers for accuracy and clarity. Parentheses for numerical expressions are used to group numbers with operations that must be done first. Let's compare the two verbal phrases above and let's find out which one needs parentheses and which one does not. Take a look at our parentheses word. Anytime we see two times the difference, it's not two times a number, it's times the operation, such as t times the sum, twice the sum, plus the difference, or even the product. Anytime we're not multiplying by a number, it's going to indicate most times that you're going to need to use parentheses. In our first example, twice the difference, we know that twice means two, and we're going to multiply the difference and the difference of what? Well, six minus four. So now this is twice the difference of six and four. On the second example, it simply says twice six, so we're doubling six, and then we're gonna subtract four. 13, and we're going to subtract the sum of four and three. In this case, this would not be 13 minus the sum. This is just 13 minus four plus three. Order operation tells us that if we use grouping symbols, find the sum of four and three before we subtract. We're going to have to use parentheses like so. Circle the verbal phrase that needs parentheses. In this particular case, we have nine times the difference. We can't multiply nine times a minus sign. We're going to have to use parentheses. And what are we trying to find the difference of? 17 and 11. Five times three plus eight, even though I'm using parentheses, I'm saying, do I have to use parentheses? Well, you actually could write it as five times three plus eight or five times three plus eight. In this particular case, you do not have to use parentheses, so we're not going to circle B. Five times the sum of three and eight. This particular case is five times the sum. Again, we can't multiply five times a plus sign, so we're trying to find the sum of what? Three and eight. This one will circle. 10 divided by 2 times 4, which would look like 10 divided by 2 times 4. We could see it this way. We could also see it this way. And we could also see it this way. So since I don't have to use parentheses, the D will not be circled as well. 10 divided by the product of 2 and 4. We have 10. We're dividing it by the product of 2 and 4. We have to divide it by the product. So we have to multiply 2 and 4 first. It could look like this. It could also look like this. A fraction line automatically groups the numerator as one group and the denominator as another group. Or we can look at it as 10 over 2 times 4 like so. This one is a doozy. We're trying to find the quotient of 10 and 2 times 4, which would be the same as E. Let's say we have a comma here. It changes everything. The quotient of 10 and 2 would be 10 divided by 2 times 4 like so. Another way of writing this would be 10 divided by 2 times like so. In the one above, this would be 10 divided by 8, which would be 5 fourths when we reduce. In this case, we would have to go 10 divided by 2, which is 5, 5 times 4, which is 20, which is entirely a different answer. In this case, we could go 10 divided by 2, which is 5, 5 times 4. We could also go 10 times 4, which is 40 divided by 2, which is 20. Be mindful of when you have a comma or when you do not. We find the quotient of that, and then we multiply by 4. If the comma is not there, we're going to find the quotient of 10 and this 2 times 4, which looks like the one above. This one we will circle. And our last one on this page, 4 times the quantity. When we see the word quantity, usually indicates we're going to need parentheses. The quantity is 22 decreased by 15. So it looks like so. This one we will circle. Write each numerical expression into words. In this particular case, we have twice difference of 7 and 5. You could also, instead of using twice, use two times. Notice that we have that TW, TW in 2, and TW also in twice. We see this also in Twinkies, Twix, Twins. Anytime we have that twa, 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 most likely we're multiplying by 2. Very similar to this one where we can say thrice the sum of a number in 4. It's very similar to that three where we see that THR, very similar to even triple. Translate each verbal expression into algebraic expression. In this particular case, we're saying three increased by 12 times a number. The next one, 10 times the sum. We're multiplying by the sum, so we're going to need parentheses. We're trying to find the sum of a number in four. 
three times the difference. So in this case, we're going to need parentheses, the difference of a number in 12. In this next one, many people get confused with twice and square. When we're squaring a number, we are writing an exponent, square. In this one, it states the square of a number increased by 2. And it looks like so. In this next case, it says multiply 5 in the sum. So we're multiplying 5 times that sum. That sum is twice a number D and 10. And it looks like so. I hope you enjoyed the lesson, and I'll see you in the next one.